Hey guys, we've got another uh, item on the bench. I've actually made my way to uh, Australia. So I've got my brother, the other half of this channel here. And we're going to look at this thing here, the uh, UUE. I'm not sure how to say that, UUE, but it's a, uh, a 946C. Yeah, if you, if you search that in AliExpress, where we source this one from, you'll find all sorts of brands and models. of. It's pretty much the same thing, uh, the 946C. It's a hot plate for reflow soldering. Um, this one here goes, you can program it to go from about well 50 degrees or whatever up to about three to four hundred you might get to four hundred degrees um, it just uses one of these little control modules that stuck in there um, it's got an element in this block of aluminium thermocouple to track that temperature and it's, it's quite simple um, so we're just gonna have a look at that today we haven't opened it yet I have run it up before and I've found that it's about 10 percent inaccurate so it reads low so if it's actually 110 degrees here it reads 100 degrees so I'd be interested to see if there's a way to calibrate that on this little module. There's not a lot of literature on that online, and the instructions are basically how do you set, you know, the temperature, and it's it's pretty basic. All right, guys, we've just moved to this bench over here. It's a little bit more convenient to show you what's going on. So, looking at the electrical side of things, we've got the earth wire here. They've used red. I'd like to see green or yellow here, um, but it is a wire that's connected. It's been crimped and uh, pushed onto the uh, fast-on terminal on the uh, IC socket, and it's uh, soldered to the crimp here and bolted down nice and firm. So, that's nice. That is uh, earthed very well. Also, if you look at the uh, power switch here, we've got black and red. It turns out that they're switching both the active and the neutral. So when you turn this off, it completely cuts power to the unit, which is another nice thing. Um, it shouldn't be the case, but if your active and neutral was swapped around, uh, this will still isolate regardless. So that's a, that's a nice little touch there too. If you look at the uh, control module here, you can see they've mounted it in the front panel like this, and they've just used a copious amount of hot glue there. So that's a bit, it's a bit messy, but I guess it stops it from rattling around when it's shipping and things. Um, and it's not really a fix that well. You can see it's just peeling off, so, I mean, whatever. Um, you can see the thermocouple is coming through here. It, it's, it goes through to the top plate, the heating plate, and it comes through into the control module here, and there's also four wires, which would be for two elements, and it looks like they're wired in parallel. So just both elements on at the same time, and then off again. And so between here, we've got these metal standoffs, which... We we'll have to see how that goes because that's going to transfer the heat from the hot plate into the control box a little bit. That's probably why they ventilated it so much as well. There's vents pretty much on all the sides here. Um, and you can also see there's a bit of insulation sticking out between the hot plate there. So um, we might see if we can unscrew these bolts here and then have a look at what's inside the hot plate. Gee, they're long bolts. So they're going right the way through those spaces then. Yep. Just now, ideally here, we would have a uh, star washer underneath that that crimp, and that way, when you tighten this down, the star washer will cut through the uh, the paint and touch the metal. But this is screwing into metal as well, so it's not too bad. But yeah, to make it perfect, we would have that with a star washer underneath. I'll probably grab one out of the parts bin and stick one in there when we reassemble. Yeah. One more screw. Just flip it over this way too so we don't have to... There should be enough length there to yep. fold that over. Hang on, I'll grab that out. Where'd it go? There we go. So if we flip that over... There's our mounting posts. They're pretty thin so the heat transfer might not be too bad. Although it's going to transfer through the uh, bolts as well, but looks like they've they've got just these this sheet metal here has been tapped, so it just screws straight into that. So we got four more, and that will then release the uh, the hot plate from the surround. So they've got plenty of holes here just for expansion too. It's probably just one big stamp out for multiple uses. Yeah, yeah. And they've just sort of you can see the insulation in there. They haven't bothered to block that off. It's just sort of stuffed in. You can see there's a, a few different designs, so um, there must be a a multiple of different designs that they use for the same box. So we'll get those ones out. I don't know if that's the right size, just try that. That is perfect. So I'm sort of hoping that the on the other side of this plate there's a there's a sheet of aluminium. I'm hoping it's nice and thick because that'll 
tend to spread the temperature out evenly instead of getting like hot spots where the elements are. You sort of want it to be a nice even temperature. Now with my previous testing when I was checking the temperature, I did find that it was about 10 degrees difference from the center to the extreme edge. So it's... All right, so there's more yeah. standoffs inside. Oh, interesting. Look at the elements. They're flat. Yeah, they'll be ah. they'll be a nichrome wire, kind of like in your toaster, wrapped around a bit of mica. Yeah, right. And it does look like that is pretty thick. That's what, uh, five like or six, six mil? Yeah, six mil. So that's nice. I'll tell you what. Grab a um, oh, calipers here. caliper. Just let me put the battery in <laughs> So there's the insulation there, it's glass fibre insulation. You've got to be careful with this stuff, it's not like the stuff in your house where it's uh, biosoluble. If this gets in your skin, like into your soft back of your hand, whatever, it will itch for days. It's literally just glass. So the stuff in your house is often uh, biosoluble, so if it gets in your skin it will dissolve. There you go, 6 mil. 6 mil thick, so that's not too bad it's at all. pretty good. Alright, so do you want to take this down a bit more? Can do. We will. Get... I still, I still need this to work, so we're not going to go extreme, but we'll. Yeah, we won't unwind the, uh, the actual elements, but we will have a look at this. It's like a piece of steel sheeting, just sort of sandwiching everything together. Uh, I reckon that thermocouple, or maybe a thermistor. I'm not sure yet. It looks like it might have a. Uh, a crimp lug on it? Yep, look at that. Oh, nice. So, yeah, so that's a thermocouple. If I hold it up, you can just see the little bead right at the end of my uh, screwdriver there. And they've crimped that, so then they can screw that down to get really good thermal contact through to the, uh, mm. the thermocouple. Yeah, it's well done. That's common in amplifiers. They will have the same setup, but they'll epoxy a, um, a thermistor in there, and they screw it to the uh, heat sink on the amplifier, so you get really good thermal contact. So if they... Amplify overheats, it'll shut down. It's a convenient way of attaching that sort of stuff. All right. Okay, so no just... thermal grease or anything. So it's just sort of straight on there. But I'm, I'm happy with these. I, I, I really thought they were just going to be like bar element sort of thing. Just sort of underneath this radiating to it. But oh, it's good. Yes, I'm not going to open it up because I don't want to damage it. But you can kind of maybe see in the end there. I'm hoping, hoping that's focused. There's a few sh uh, sheets of mica, and what they do, I've actually seen inside these before, they've got a sheet of mica and they wrap the uh, the nichrome wire, the uh, element wire around, and they have another sheet of mica on the top and the bottom that's slightly larger, and that way it insulates, and the mica is rated to a very high temperature. And so when that uh, element heats up, the heat just transfers through, the mica insulates, and it won't break down and uh, cause any problems. So it looks like we got, yeah, like we said, there's two elements there, and they would equal 600 watts, so it's about a 300 watt per element. You can see that it's been a bit warm where we've uh, warmed it up to test it out. And that's all we have in there. Do you think there'd be any benefit to putting any sort of thermal paste between the elements? Or it's, it's, I mean, it's sandwiched, held tight against it. Yeah, and... The heat's not going anywhere else, is it? Yeah, yeah, and it's not something we, we're not care, we don't care about the last little bit of uh, thermal uh, transfer like in a, a CPU. Yeah. The heat's going to only go into there anyway. Yeah. And um, we're not changing. If we were changing temperature up and down quickly, it probably would make a bit more uh, more difference because the heat can transfer quicker. Mm. And when you change the temperature, then it will the transfer will cause that temperature to change quickly. Yeah. But if it's just sitting there solid state on and it's not changing, then yeah, there's not really much uh, use for the the uh, thermal paste. Yeah. They're making good contact anyway. Yeah. So it's good enough, just like that. Nice one. So um. Shall we um, put it back together? Yeah. Well, then, then what we can do is we can fire it up and we can show... I've got another thermocouple device. We can sort of show the temperature difference that we're getting and also maybe a little time lapse and show how fast it can get up to temperature. Yeah, so we'll, we'll cut the video here for now and we'll uh, be back in a sec with it all reassembled and ready to test. Now, we've had a bit of a thought just now as we're putting it back together why this thing may be reading a bit funny. And this might be a little bit of an upgrade you could do if you uh, get one of these. You see... This gets screwed down, but the screw has to pass through this plate. And this plate is held up off of this plate by the thickness of the elements. So if you screw, put a screw through like that, this thermocouple is still going to wiggle around because there's a bit of a gap. So what we might do, we might put a few washers there. So when we screw that down, uh, the washers will then transfer that uh, screw down force and hold that tight against the plate rather than just flapping around a little bit. 
So that might um, help fix our um, inaccuracy of the uh, reading a, a bit incorrect. Yeah, I can't imagine it's a massive difference once you sort of settle at the temperature, but like it, it's not going to hurt, and it's probably something that yeah, like you say, a couple of washes. Chuck yeah, in yeah. So definitely won't hurt, and it'll, yeah, it might. It, we'll see if that that fixes the problem. Just in putting this back together, I've noticed here they've actually uh, welded or spot welded or welded in uh, some little bosses. So that's the uh, screw points for the where it attaches to here. So that's pretty nice too, because um, that's a lot stronger than just forming the metal up and like forcing it to a a tube and then tapping it out. There's a proper little boss there. So yeah, yeah. and they've also painted the inside. I don't know if that's paint or, or like a powder probably, coat. Probably a powder coat. But they've done like the full interior of everything. Like it's, I'm really surprised actually by how well this thing's built for the price point. By the way, I think it was about 120 bucks Australian, about 100 bucks US. That included express shipping. I got it in a few days from China. So yeah, not bad. So we managed to get the thing back together and uh, we've put the washers on that uh, temperature sensor as we're talking about. We used some uh, M4 washers. I think I used three of them were enough uh, for this unit. You just have to try it out with, you know, grab a bunch of washers and stick them in there and make sure that the uh, metal plate underneath isn't bulging, but also make sure it's holding that uh, temperature sensor firmly. So for us it was three washers because our washer is about 0.8 or 1 mil thick. But yeah, just try it and uh, a bit of trial and error and you'll get that set just nice so you get the good uh, thermal contact with a uh, sensor to the hot plate. We've also got this uh, thermometer here it takes two thermocouple inputs so we've got two thermocouples on leads what we're going to do is we'll run a test on this to see number one how fast it can bring the temperature up to our set temperature we're going to set it to 200 degrees as a test but also because we've got two probes we'll put one in the center and one in the corner and we'll see how even the temperature is on this this plate here and we saw previously there's a six mil plate, so I'm hoping for a good result, but we'll see how it goes. What we'll do is we'll set up a stopwatch and then run a time lapse to skip you guys past that. So I've got the temperature one is in the center, which is the top display. Temperature two is in the corner, which is the bottom display here. I'm gonna turn this on and start the stopwatch. Then we'll go to a time lapse, so you'll be able to see the real time that this is running. So we'll flick this on now. We wanna set this to 200 degrees as a test. It's currently set to 250, so I'll go set, and I'll move across to the 50 and go down, 200, set. That's now 200 degrees, so I'll start the timer. Let's see how we go. All right, we're up to temperature now. You notice there's a little bit of a difference here. We've put some thermal compound on the ends of these uh, thermocouples because we found that with the spring tension of the wire and the weight, it wasn't pushing down hard enough to get a good reading, but with the uh, Arctic Silver we had laying around, we put a bit there and it's working really, really well. So it's set to 200 degrees. As uh, we mentioned before, it's reading 200 degrees. It thinks we're at 200 degrees. If you look over here, 202, 201, it's spot on. Uh, so that washer mod that we did to make sure that thermocouple inside was pushing uh, to the uh, hot plate, that's uh, worked perfectly. So you'll also notice we got 196, 195 over here at the extremity. So from the middle to the edge, we got a differential of five to six degrees which really isn't an issue. Like if you're talking two to 300 degrees, we're talking a couple of percent. And if you're talking about reflow soldering, putting boards on there, preheating them, coming in with a hot air gun, it's gonna work perfectly. So I'm actually pretty happy with that. It looks like the plate thickness has worked quite well for this application. It took us seven minutes to get to 200 degrees. It's holding steady. So I'm happy with that. I'm giving it a thumbs up. All right guys, so don't forget, hit that subscribe button, hang around, we have some more videos for you, and we'll see you next time. Okay, quick amendment to the video. Um, I've been using this for a couple of weeks now and I've made a few modifications and changes uh, which has made prototyping and my use cases for this uh, a lot more convenient. So the first thing you may notice is I've added a little switch here. So I've actually cut that into the, the metal and wired that in. And this switch goes between this controller and the elements up here. So this controller still thinks it's doing stuff and it's switching um, the mains, but then I cut the mains here and that way, if I turn it on, uh, it might be a little bit hard to see, but this is set to 200 degrees. You might be able to see that there. Set to 200 degrees. It's actually 39 degrees at the moment. It's a little bit warm. I've had this running earlier. Um, and without this little switch on, um, there's no power getting to the heating elements. So it'll just sit there at 39 degrees. Um, and then I can cut the elements in now. And then it'll heat up. You'll see that. that will uh, slowly come up. Now the reason why this is handy is because sometimes you want to just turn off the heating elements but you still want to see the temperature. 
Um, and the only other way to do that is to actually go in and keep resetting the set point all the way down so it cuts off the elements, which is a, a real pain, especially if you've got boards on here or you want to let the, let the boards cool down slowly but you still want to keep an eye on the temperature, um, you'd have to just keep changing the setting. So I just bang the switch in so I can bang the elements on, I can have things nice and hot, I just flick that off. It doesn't use any power really, you know, it's just um, a little bit quiescent current here just to run this sort of stuff, but uh, it cuts the elements and allows me to monitor the temperature dropping. Um, so that was a little cheap. Uh, modification. The other thing you may have noticed, I'll just switch this off, the other thing you may have noticed is there's a strip of aluminium up here and there's two um, socket head bolts in here. So these have actually been, um, I've screwed holes in here and I tapped two holes for these M6 bolts. Um, and what that allows me to do is put this strip here uh, and I can take it off, you know, I can keep this nice and flat, but it allows me to put this strip here which has been really useful uh, when I'm positioning boards, I can sort of butt them up against that or I'll, the, the main use I have is to sit a board on top of that. So here's a particular board that I've been doing. I've just covered the, the company's brand there to keep them innocent. Um, but this has these through-hole connectors. As you can see, they've got um, all these little through-hole pins coming through, uh, which wouldn't allow this to, to lay flat on top of the panel here. And I've had to come in and modify some of these prototypes and change some components and things. So this piece of uh, aluminium strip which is the same sort of width as that, allows the board to sit flat on the aluminium. The pins don't touch, so, the, so this gets a nice even heating of the board. I can then come in with my hot air gun and reflow and, and do bits and pieces. So that's been nice, and as you can see, I've actually cut up a few bits of metal here and I've sanded them flat, um, so I can actually have multiple boards on here. I can have like a board here, here and here. Um, and rearrange things. So it's useful for me just to have some little scraps of aluminium that I've sort of taken the burrs off and um, sort of flattened them on some uh, fine grit sandpaper. Um, so they're the things I've done. Um, it's been super useful. It's been really helpful when I'm doing um, hot air reflow because it gets the board up to temperature and then I'm just taking it up like that extra 50 degrees on the component. It's really fast. It's really sped things up for repairs um, and prototyping. So I've been quite happy with it. The other use I've, I've had this for is when I do ultrasonic cleaning, I'll set this to about 65 degrees. I'll take the boards out of the ultrasonic cleaner, rinse them, um, and then I'll drop them in isopropyl alcohol, stick them on here, and it gets them bone dry nice and fast. Um, so another good use. So yeah, um, you might have used one of these, a few little modifications, um, and it's, it's fit in the shop nicely. It's been really good. So thumbs up, and uh, see you in the next video, guys.